Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today we're going to be playing Disco Elysium. So today I'm not entirely sure, but this might be the last episode. I think we're nearing the end. Obviously there's no way for me to be sure. I don't know, but it seems like the story might be wrapping up and I don't know how to feel. I have so many thoughts and feelings about this game that I'm going to save for the end credits. So I'm not gonna get into it much right now, but I don't know if I'm ready for this game to end. But I'm also really interested to see how it's gonna wrap up. So let's waste more time. I'm gonna do the recap real quick and then we'll get into the episode. So in the last episode, we start out in our hostel room after we had just woken up from the whole tribunal fight. We went back downstairs to talk to some of the people down there. We talked to Gart, so I'm glad he's all right. We also went over and we talked to Titus. He talked about how he was upset that you know, Angus and Lizzie were just young kids and he feels responsible for them. So I am really upset that I didn't manage to save more of his his crew because I didn't want them to die. So he kind of wished us luck and we also told him, hey, you know, you'd be a good cop if you ever wanted to. So hopefully he considers that. Um, I don't know how true that is just because he has a bad temper. And then lastly, we went up to Clausier's room because we wanted to check out the window again to see if we missed something. Upstairs in her room, she had knocked a hole through the window where the bullet had gone through. She took a red string and gave us a trajectory of the bullet so that we'd be better able to figure out where it came from. Um, that also shows us that she probably has a lot more skill sets than we even know about because she was able to do that. I mean, she was up there on the roof for so long that she probably was studying the trajectory of it and basically pieced together herself where the bullet came from. Turns out the bullet came from the islet. I don't know if it's called islet or island. They say islet, so I'm just gonna say that. It turns out it came from the old sea fort down in the middle of the water, um, a little far out from the coast. So Lillian from the fishing village generously lent us her boat. So Kim got in and we blasted sad FM on our way to the island and it was an amazing scene. Eventually we made it to the island and we went inside the sea fort and it was this old rundown place with a lot of communist memorabilia. There was a bed in the corner, so we decided to take a rest. We had the dream where we walked across the water and we came out in, I believe, Jamrock, um, across from a video rental store and Dolores Day was waiting for us. Now, it was pretty obvious that it wasn't actually Dolores Day. It was Harry's ex-wife. She talked a little more about, you know, why she left. Well, she didn't really g give us specifics. It's obvious that Harry is having such a hard time letting her go, and I think that's really important. He needs to let her go. It's sad, but not everyone gets a happy ending with their partner. It's just sort of the sad reality to it. Um, and it even turns out that she's pregnant. Eventually, after trying to beg her to stay, we kissed her and I still feel bad about that. I don't think I should have because it just wasn't right. She obviously didn't want to kiss us back, so I tried to stop it as quick as I could. So then after that, we woke up, kind of <laughs> bled out a little bit. We went out to the back of the sea fort and there was a man sitting by a campfire. They referred to this man as the deserter. Turns out he was an ex-soldier and he deserted his squadron. That's why they called him that, I think. I forgot his name. I don't know. He talked a lot. The man talked like there was no tomorrow. It was crazy. And after a while, we did manage to get him to confess to shooting Ellis. He had the perfect vantage point and it was just really obvious that he was the one who did it. As it turns out, he didn't really do it because he had anything against Ellis. He, I guess, had something against Clause. I can't tell if he was just in love with her and jealous that Ellis was, you know, together with her. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of blanking at this part for some reason, but for me, I feel like he was jealous and, you know, he saw her come to Martinez, and so he'd been just watching her for a long time. I think he had formed some sort of attachment to her because eventually after he shot him, he also was the one who brought her the Maybells and left them at her door. I don't know if he was thinking he would console her with them or he, if he was trying to manipulate her, I don't know. Like I said, we managed to extract the confession 
And before we managed to take him away, we heard something in the reeds. I managed to pass this check, which I didn't know what it was at the time, but as it turns out, this creature emerged from the reeds, and it was the Insulindian Phasmid. Lena and Morel were right, the Phasmid does exist, and we were the first people to ever see it. It was such a cool scene, I'm so happy I passed that check. I saved a lot of skill points, so I just used them all at that moment. So yeah, it was it was so cool. Kim pulled out his camera, and eventually we were able to, you know, calm the phasmid down and speak to it, and just it was so cool. Kim took a picture of it, and it was just one of the one of the highlights of the game, honestly. So hopefully we can send that picture to Lena and Morel, and they'll be able to look it over and see that they were right, it does exist, and maybe they'll come back out to Martinez to try and see it themselves. That's where we left off, um, and I was thinking, before we get into the episode, I was also thinking, you know, what's gonna happen after they solve the case? And it's, it kind of made me a little depressed thinking about it. I'm like, well, Kim is probably gonna go back to the 57th precinct, and Harry's gonna go to the 41st, and they're not gonna work together anymore. I really hope that they stick together because it's clear Harry needs that support right now that Kim gives him and Kim is just such a good friend and honestly really cares about him. So I'm hoping that maybe they'll stay together as partners and just work together from now on. Maybe it's wishful thinking, I don't know. But yeah, that's all I think I wanted to cover. So let's not waste more time and let's get back into this game and maybe finish it. Who knows if we're finishing it this episode, we'll see. Yeah, let's get into it. All right, so we're back. I still have one skill point left over, so that's pretty cool. What I'm gonna do is change back to my regular outfit. I think I'm gonna put my necktie back on. Feels wrong without it on, not gonna lie. All right, so I think it's time to take you into custody, sir. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. The old man looks around, confused. I mean, what did he expect when he confessed to murder? I don't get it. <laughs> you just think we're gonna be like, alright, thanks. See ya. Something is very wrong with him now. Oh, the Phasmid freak him out? Sir, how could you not see the Phasmid? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. If he was able to shoot the guy from all the way over there and see him like that. How is he not able to see the phasmid? See? He stares at the reeds and falls silent. I know that they said that uh, the phasmid had like slowly poisons you over time uh, without you even really realizing it, so maybe this is what's happening. Mr. Dallas? The man does not respond. He keeps staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking. Is he all right? With fear and longing. Like an addict of some terrible substance. Snap your fingers under his nose. Wave your hand in front of his eyes. Touch his shoulder gently. The plastic cape feels coarse. A light shiver passes the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. You're talking a lot of shit earlier. He's going into some kind of psychomotor mobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dross? The Lieutenant inspects him gently. The trembling mouth appears to sigh. <laughs> Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here, while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. Huh. Oh, so we're not taking him in right away. What has happened to this man? We found something- some things in the Phasmid's nest, Mr. Drows. Oh, I didn't even look at those yet. That's right. What happened to this man? Old age and shock. He looks at him then you. I think it's the Phasmid. Old age and shock, yes. I mean, he already started going into this... before we saw it, so... The appearance of the Phasmid in conjunction with the stress of the arrest. He spent his entire life here. For him to live would be... He shakes his head. We found some things in the Phasmid's nest, Mr. Dross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should... Show him the ceramic helmet. Nothing. 
Just dull staring. Not even rage left, wherever he is. The last embers have gone out. The war is over. Show him the password? No reaction. His breathing is slow, and he appears very old all of a sudden. Around 80. This is an old man, at last. No longer a tin soldier, but the broken down remains of a man. Let's have a closer look at that after. I think I'll be more useful than him. He nods towards the man. All right, I'm going to let you rest now. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. Sorry, I can't really feel sympathy for him. <laughs> the blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. All right. Okay, now we should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. Okay, well, first we're going to look at that passport. Kaze's passport. This passport, issued by the Sovereign Republic of Oranye, is issued to a black-haired woman called Katazina Alazie. Katazina. Classius hidden documents from the MT boy. The lieutenant looks at it in your hands. Look at the photo. It's Klasia, with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish. Younger somehow. Oh, very different. An old photo. Before life came and did what it does. <laughs> Honestly, after everything, I I still feel bad for her. Like <laughs> even if she kind of screwed some people over. What was this doing in the Phasmans nest? Maybe our man, Mr. Dross, took it from Classius or whatever her name was, hiding place or. I think so. Perhaps for some blackmailing plan. I think the Phasma took it. The Phasma took it, and I sense it to do so. I saw something open up the boy with spindly legs. Point to your head. Um. I mean, it was in his nest. I think the phasma took it. Like a magpie? What a coincidence. Then it would also have collected the other objects, which would be highly unusual. Maybe. I can see how the helmet could wash up on the island. And the scope. Maybe Mr. Dross lost it. But to seek this out would be very unusual behavior for an arthropod. Yeah. Would it? Maybe it was simply curious. Perhaps it was curious, like an octopus? Perhaps it had a vendetta against our Miss Aranye. Perhaps it was curious? An octopus belongs to a very <laughs> different class. It's not even an insect, it's a mollusk. But yes, I see your point. Thank you. It says, Katarazine. I forgot you say that. She said it would be for Anouk Meyer Smith. Anouk Meyer Smith. Katarzyna Alazia was supposed to be her real name. Where Klazia comes from, remember? God damn it. <laughs> I told you she kept lying to you. She's probably lying to someone else right now. In another city. I thought we already knew her real name. Uh, Katarzyna... If that's how you say it, it was supposed to be her real name. She lied to us. Maybe this is her real passport, not a fake, because this is her real name. No, she lied to us. Her so-called real name was not her real name. Somehow she's managed to lie to us about that, too. He almost smiles. What's her real name, then? I don't know. But it's not Katarzyna Alasio, or Klasio, or Anouk Meyer smith <laughs> We didn't even scratch the surface with her, detective. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> Perhaps it's better that we didn't arrest her. Who knows what hell she'd be raising in my district by now. <laughs> he looks east. All right. I guess that's all we can look at. Um, there's probably... If you failed that check, you probably wouldn't have even found it, right? That's crazy. Guess it's time to go. Get help. Wouldn't it be better to just, like, bring him on the boat? Maybe, well, maybe he'd have, like, a really bad reaction to that. Never mind. Damn it, Klausia. Lied to us like 50 million times. But I mean, she's got to save her own skin. So what are you going to do? I guess we're going back. <laughs> Can we blast that FM again, please? The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Let's return to the mainland. Let's. We are done here. He says, adjusting his glasses as he looks out over the water. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. 
But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Is it my partner? Two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. Yeah, we solved the case now thanks to you guys. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. What the hell is this dude's deal anyway? It said he was coming over to see me last episode, I think. Hi. Look what the tide brought in. <laughs> Says the man without sunglasses. Suddenly his expression changes as he and he tilts his head. Harry, you're bleeding all over the place. You're half dead. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to <laughs> what you've just seen. Forget about all this. There's a giant... No one else seems bothered by the bleeding. Where are you people? <laughs> no one else seems bothered. Bothered by it? Harry, you look like you need a fucking organ transplant. Maybe I do. Oh, fuck it. Let's not get into that. Uh, forget about this. This is a giant. We are not forgetting about anything. Look at you. He points at you with both hands. Who are you people? Hello, I'm Trent Heilerstrom. I believe we've met on several occasions. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait. Who are you? I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicumar, and this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. He says, gesturing towards his companions. Oh, this music is so good. Special Consultant Trant Heidelstam, Battle Officer Judith Mino. Hi. Hi. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. What? Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi, Prison 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. He points to the for it. The scene is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. Mm. We might need your help with something later. He adds, suddenly regaining his confidence. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated <laughs> police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. Yeah, it's kind of weird. But this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant. Way to feel, feed me to the wolves. No, Kim, you've got to have my back. Let's destroy them. <laughs> um, let him go. Thank you. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. She says warmly, flashing the Lieutenant the tiniest of smiles. Letting the Lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to befall you. Man, what is this about? Ari, we want to help you. Trant, I believe this is where you come in? Are they gonna arrest me? Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was <laughs> asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. Okay. No, Trump, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? It turns to you. What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. <laughs> How did you know I was here? <clears throat> you aren't the man with sunglasses at all. You're not even blonde. You, you never told me you're not a horse-faced woman. Point to her. So Trent Heidelstam turned out to be special consultant Trent Heidelstam. <laughs> Duped again. No one says who they are. You mentioned a task force? Where have you been all this time? There was a mercenary tribunal. God damn it, Harry. He shifts his weight, crosses his arms, and looks at you in the eye. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. <laughs> Wait, so you just let me face a squad of trained killers alone just to teach me a lesson? <clears throat> All will burn, satellite officer Vicnamere. Make no mistake about it. Why didn't you just detect or die then? Why would you leave a literal police god? I said all those things, I'm not like that anymore. You just let me face a squad of trained killers? It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was gonna be a tribunal, did we? I'm not like that anymore. Yes, you're sorry. You're the sorriest cop who ever <laughs> lived. Nothing has changed, Harry. I've heard this repentance shit a million times over. 
How did you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. Oh man, I saved his establishment and he still betrays me. Turned to the face of general direction of the whirling and yelled, Damn you, cafeteria manager, you betrayed me for the last time. <laughs> okay, I understand. Gart told you. Um, and the uh, people on the street helped us too, with your whereabouts. Everyone screwed me over. You're a legend among the drunks, Harry. A legendary local drunk. You aren't the man with sunglasses at all. Guilty as charged. I heard you'd lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to see if it was true. He exchanges a look with the special consultant. <clears throat> and it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. Actually, I suspected something was off. Maybe if you hadn't been so sarcastic, I would have realized it was... I knew you. I don't like being lied to. Okay, I had that coming. Had what coming? Not recognizing people you work with every day. Brain damage. Heidelstam turns out to be special consultant Tran Heidelstam. Yes, I'm Tran Heidelstam. I never Heidelstam. said I wasn't Tran Heidelstam. Wait, what was up with that kid then? Mikael? Mikael is my son. Oh yeah? What was up with all the interesting history spying on me? Oh, okay. Sorry. No problem. So what are you special consulting here? What indeed? I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Königstein in the 30s. Like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, <laughs> personality theory... Hmm. He's here to see if you're insane. He is smart. Let's move on. <laughs> you mentioned a task force? Yeah. Major Crimes Unit. Under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicomar. Ring any bells? Refresh my memory. Who else is in this? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn Major Crimes Unit. There's you, me, Jude, Tron fucking Heidelstam, <laughs> and Guillaume Baby. He stares at you. I'm technically just a <laughs> civilian advisor. <laughs> this dude's like, why am I even here? I don't know, dude. Oh, fuck you. You're part of this shit show. Yeah, um, first, who's Guillaume Bevy? Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here. And Tron because I'm forcing him to stay. Okay, so what does the unit do? Do? It's a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We are shit here now, Harry. Because of you. <sighs> the 41st isn't... He trails off, not wanting to finish the sentence. Duped again. No one says who they are. Duped? Hey, here's a brilliant idea. Don't be a morbid drunk and you won't be duped so easily. Gardener, scab leader, this, turned to the lieutenant. Tell me at least you are the, you are who you said you were. Okay, I'm not going to question him. Yeah, that does have something to do with it, yes? No, everyone's just a brilliant master of disguises. <laughs> None of this is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors, he talks without slurring, he can drive a boat, he's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia, episodic and semantic. Meaning, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, <laughs> Isola, pet and so on. As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him and... I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have well, theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? Wait, social socially economically you think i'm so poor i lost my memory not when you phrase it like that but i don't think critical theory i know everyone thinks this is far-fetched pink academia but still i don't think it should be off the table here what he lost his memory because of capitalism 
<laughs> no, not like that. I'm not talking for Hedefort's call here. But Harry, I asked you, what do you think happened? Uh, I drank so much I lost my memory, and I'm now slowly recovering from it. I made it all up. It was a fantasy, a stupid joke. I know what I am. It might have something to do with an anomaly in the church, a two millimeter hole in the world. I'm a highly experimental detective. This is a method I used to solve the case. Some things so sad happened to me that I couldn't be me anymore. It was a defense mechanism. Capitalism. Capitalism fucked me beyond all recognition. Trant is right. I think it's this. Psychotraumatic amnesia. Trant. I can go for that. Shit kid is a broken man. Always has been. Who isn't? I know I am. But you know what? I think it was a mixture of that and the drinking. I keep my shit together. Also, I know a person can't wipe their own mind, however traumatic it gets. That doesn't happen. You're lying. Or insane. Or both. But Detective Vigmer, he has blanked out before. She interjects. I have? Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case. The other when we looked into that mural. She pauses, remembering. The two cases in your ledger. The unsolvable case and the next world mural. Those were recent. Did I read those? Those cases were hard on you. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. I imagine it was a defense mechanism. What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. He gestures towards the scenery. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team. To borrow a known metaphor, Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. He just needed for its end. He nods confidently. Okay, Trump, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. <laughs> I'm glad we brought you. <laughs> will he or will he not be able to work in the major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. But I want to stay with Kim. I'm ready to lead again. Line detective is good for now. He's wrong. I'm too far gone to work. Fuck all of you. I don't want to be in your unit. No, Harry. Fuck you. You already fucked us. I've already explained this shit to Price twice. To Berdyayeva four times. I'm your partner. I answer for you when you're not there. When you clocked out... I became responsible for your cases I don't feel... and your special task force. I do feel a little bad, but... They can keep that pension. You're rock solid. You can put your clothes on hard. What now? Now nothing. Now we're just <laughs> going to stand here. Just stand there. Yeah, yeah. Just stand there. It's cool. Really? No. Now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? <laughs> Why is it there, Harry? Oh no. You guys weren't supposed to see that. <laughs> Hold on, in the ocean? Faint ignorance. That wasn't me, it was stolen by traffic hooligans. I drove into the ocean when I was drunk. I thought the killer would be underwater. He wasn't. <laughs> the time had come. Tequila sunset. I don't know, I don't know what it's doing there. Hold on, in the ocean? Yes. In the ocean, under the sea. Our work vehicle, with fishing clams and other sea shit. I drove it in the ocean when I was drunk. Ah, oh, so refreshing. He just admits it. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of everyone's payslip. It doesn't matter. <sighs> your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. He exhales to calm his breathing. I got my badge right here. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic, and the badge slips out of your hand. Oh, son of a bitch. Catch it. Oh, God. Should I? 
No, I'm saving my skill point. Just, I don't think this matters too much. Yay! <laughs> Aw, that was a cool animation. Not today, badge. <laughs> Not today. Did I get my badge? Ho behold, my badge. The drama's unnecessary. I got the badge. All is well. Did I get the badge? You got it all right. You're showing it to him. Victorious. They're seeing the badge. Behold, my badge. And your gun? Yes, unimpressed by the piece of plastic in your hand. As if having your badge and gun are natural states, not achievements. Gun, gun, just repeat gun. My gun is right here, shown the Villier uh, 9mm. I upgraded my gun to a rifle. Present the Trigon 4.46 rifle. My gun is right here. <sighs> he has it. And he didn't drop it. You're drunk like a berm, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. So it doesn't even matter that I found my gun? I'm not drunk. I haven't even started drinking again. Lie. So what? I've had a little drink. I try not to, but I can't work as well without it. So it doesn't even matter that I found my gun? You were never supposed to lose it in the first place. Not lost. Is your gun's natural state, you drunk bum. So what? I've had a little drink. A little drink? You smell like a corpse. I'm downwind and I can barely breathe. You smell like shit. You let a suspect escape, Harry. Glazier something. Because you were too drunk to assess a flight risk. We've read the reports. Lieutenant Kitsuhagis. We know. <sighs> Is Kim gonna back me up? Glazier, she was some kind of spy from the Occident. Specially trained. Not taking her in was the right thing to do. She gave a vital clue that led us to the island. Okay, I got duped here. She pulled, she pulled one on me. Yes, I let her go as an act of mercy. That's just a small detail in a huge case you know nothing about. That doesn't matter. None of it does. We are looking into oxygen holocaust times, times a quadrillion. I've come to know the final fate of man in the universe. She gave us a vital clue to the last sea island. Oh well, if she was nice, I'm not even gonna get into the other suspect who also escaped. Yeah. Ruby something? He rubs his face in frustration. Or the fact that you're ever Claire's little peony now, doing I don't know what for him. That's small time stuff. That's hey. nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. I forged it, okay? What? Compared to the eight people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. <sighs> you know nothing about it, dude. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired and vetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois could between them and the locals. The lieutenant interrupts him. Here yeah. comes the cavalry. <laughs> he did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. Thank you, Kim. Yes, what he said. I also solved the case. It's solved. All of it. Yeah, it was a massacre. We got wiped. Where the hell were you? The firefight is a trivial matter compared to the greatest discovery of the century. I'm just sorry. Yes, what he said. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. <clears throat> he brushes a stray strand of hair out of his eye and coughs. He thinks of apologizing, but decides against it. <laughs> You've spent the week with him on this case. What is your take? <laughs> um, the case? On Lieutenant Euphretor Dubois. Well, the drinking, the last gun, also losing his badge, that's all true. And he's been drinking on the job. A cold gust of wind, he pulls up his collar. I really shouldn't have been drinking at all. I was trying to up my physique. Oh no, did I ruin it? <sighs> the man sighs deeply. Then there's the self-flagellation issue. He likes to apologize, profusely. <laughs> making it sound like he's guilty of at least first-degree murder. It's not a good communication strategy for an officer. It's... Dude! It's just strange, especially in light of his political views. <laughs> Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a true blue moralist. A man of the center, not prone to political outbursts, which is commendable, but also at odds with his behavior. <laughs> And then there's the motor carriage in the sea, something I was not present for. But despite all this, he is a great detective, one of the best I have seen, in fact. He breathes in sharply. 
He can talk human beings into telling him everything. And he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads, however far-fetched and tangential. He is tireless, madly driven. Well, except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke, which, by the way, I have to disagree with you, Mr. Vikmar, was a valiant effort. He really sang his heart out. Oh. Okay, he did something. <laughs> Other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator, locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a straggler who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. He pauses. A new species? <laughs> a colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as the reeds. It uh, unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the insulindian fast. Yep. <laughs> He takes out the photo and shows it to the officers. Thick white snow falls all around you. Flakes <laughs> stick to the glossy photo of the phasmid. Thank God we got the picture of it or else they would not believe us. Kim's really pulling out all the stops to protect us. You hear gasps beneath the <laughs> howling of the wind. As you can see, it's about <laughs> three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. I don't know how to pronounce that. Boom shakalaka motherfucker. <laughs> so, as you can see, I'm a pretty okay detective. Say nothing. Fucking hell is that? Is this somehow connected to the case? The man cranes his neck, looking at the photo. The killer did not seem to be aware of the phasmid's presence, <laughs> exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. He fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. Boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> yes, the phasmid may have contributed to his mental state in some way over the years. It's probably not connected per se, but the perpetrator knew of its existence. Uh, it may have contributed to his mental state. So it is connected. I must say this <laughs> is absolutely extraordinary. It's... I don't even have words for it. I kind of, I will say, I kind of feel bad that we were the ones who discovered it and not Lena and Morel because they had been, you know, doing it for so long, but... Yes, it really does make it hard to fire the drunk. His tired eyes follow the... the <laughs> okay. His tired eyes follow the photo as the lieutenant puts it away. This is a very, very sad man who has just <laughs> seen something that's made him forget his sadness. Now you make your case. Now is the time. Uh, now or never. Oh no. I also started a nightclub in the church. Also, the fast man was a female. The reeds are in its nest. The killer, Lian Ovich Dros, we have a strong motive for him. There's also a dead man on the boardwalk. I, a missing person I found. I also looked in the mystery of the doomed commercial area. So what do you say? Want to take this hot shit back? Point to yourself. Um, we have a strong motive. Lilianovich. A revolutionary matronym. Um... Revolutionary matronym? The custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms. Derived from the mother's name instead. Oh. This man's mother oh. was Lillian. His Lillian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed. But not before it made it to Revachol. So, it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me. I just thought it was noteworthy. He could killed the mercenary in an act of jealousy. He killed the mercenary hoping to start a war between the company and the Union. Um, in an act of jealousy. Jealousy? I thought this Lilianovich was an old male. To have been hiding for 50 years, like 70 something. A strange psychosexual fascination. The result of spending all this time in solitude on the islands of this bay. And trauma too. He himself gave a political reason. In his mind, he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have ballistics from the gun, matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head. And two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross 
confessed to. It's a clean win. Thank you. It's way more than that. It's more than that. A perfect folding mechanism. Like the Phasmid. It's way more than that. It will win me Dora back. Oh, that's her name. I forgot. Duh. It's my masterpiece. They'll teach me this in cop school. I did all I could. Every second was a struggle. I'm still not completely satisfied with it. It could just be a little neater. Get over yourself. You're not a perfectionist. You're a cop and you did a good job. With a lot of help from Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Yes. And none of this can hide the smell of booze on the wind. He unbuttons his jacket. I'm not drunk now. God damn it. It is bad. Even you can smell it. Chin up. Keep focusing on the positives here. <laughs> um, should I mention it? No, let's not. There was also a dead man on the boardwalk. A missing person I found. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in a boardwalk. Drunk. How did you know I found him? The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and uh, family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, good work with the missing person, detective. It's still a point for you. No denying it. Um... I looked in the mystery of the Doom commercial area. I don't know what a Doom commercial area is. You're just selling just Lane 10, a commercial building where all the bills, businesses go corrupt. I looked into it. Why? That's not what you were supposed to do here. There was a fridge we needed and a possible witness. He was just chasing a lead and ended up advising a local shopkeeper. It was okay. Of course. Call it community outreach, right? Right. I don't know if I should mention this or not. I don't think it matters. I also started a nightclub. What was that? It sounded like you set up a nightclub in the church. Yeah, I reinvigorated the local nightlife. Yeah, I did some kids a solid, turned their lives around. Yeah, and I discovered a hitherto unexplored intro phenomenon. How do you say that? Phenomenon in there, too. A two millimeter hole in the world. That's great. Anthroponeut is a great new career for you. After police officer. I don't care. Go live in the bail. Four kids were living in a tent on the ice. They were going to drown when it melted. It's not optimal, but the building was abandoned. So he put them in there. It's okay. It's not that okay. Get off this subject now. Also, the fastman was female. The reeds are its nest. Female? What makes you think so? Um... You had to see it. It had the subdued colors of a female. And the nesting behavior too, I think. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. He turns to you. It had gathered items in its nest. A helmet, a scope, and a passport. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. They are for attracting mates. I still think it was female. Of course, as I said, I'm only guessing. <laughs> I didn't see it. It must be robust if it can move a whole helmet with its limbs. Um, I think it emits a chemical that makes it look even more like the reeds. Hmm. Yes. <clears throat> that would be a chiromone. A pheromone that's seemingly beneficial to the host. It usually stimulates the affected nervous system. Not a human's, of course. But perhaps a predator's? The perpetrator seemed intoxicated somehow, like an addict. It's just a hunch, but... There are species of bees that, under the influence of chiromones, take wasp larvae to their hives. Hmm. Ants do the same with aphids, thinking they're... Do you think this is how it stayed hidden? Probably. Nothing is off the table. But uh, I want to stress this. The find does not have to be connected to the case. The case is 100% prosecutable. Without any chiromones. Of course, Lieutenant. Of course. We should treat the case and the fast made us completely separate from each other. People are not going to... He shakes his head. They're not going to go for this speculation in the constabulatory. Uh, it had mandibles that looked like hair, and it was completely wet on the, the, on the inside. Yes, but also reed-colored. Beige and brown, a little green on the outside. After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible. The PR value of this <laughs> is exceptional. 
Carp discovers new species. Maybe even discovers the Insulindian phasmid. No, no, that's too much. <laughs> this would really help with some of the uh, problems we've been having. See, people? Absolutely, this is great. This does not say vigilante murderers to me at all. This is science, news, human interest. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Yeah. Without it. He shakes his head. You're doing good here. Perhaps only for a moment, but still. <sighs> Quit while you're ahead? Or no. So what do you say? You want to take this hot shit back? <laughs> I don't want to, but you discovered a new species and solved the murder. He shrugs. So I have to, Jude. I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to go with these guys. Honestly, anything that ends this trial is okay with me. A quick nod. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Okay. Now, now you will finally get to know who you are. Wait, I have a few questions before we go about who I am. The man looks westward, impatiently, jingling his car keys in his pocket. Who am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. What? Well, <laughs> obviously you're not a gym teacher oh, anymore. Oh! But... That makes sense because of the barbell and the gym. That makes sense. But before... Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Coron. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... That does explain a lot. Harry, it explains everything. <laughs> the running around, the jumping, the bicep girth. <laughs> Your inexplicable facial hair. <laughs> the collection of fallen sportswear I've amassed. The fact that you don't seem to know <laughs> what homosexuality is. And your moves on the church floor, which honestly were just jump aerobics. <laughs> also, this guy. Just everything about this guy. <laughs> when was this? When was I a gym teacher? In your 20s or late 20s. You've really let yourself go since then. He looks you over. You said in Kuran, I was a gym teacher there? Yes, you taught gym in Kuran. I believe that's the term. Taught gym at a high school. You were a high school gym teacher. <laughs> the smell of sweat and glue. The worn floorboards. High school. Harry, your goings on with Kuno, Andre, <laughs> Asel, the whole thing on the ice. That's why you are so juvie. Oh. His smirk suggests really contained. <laughs> why did I join the RCM then? The regular. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are. All that. <laughs> you, every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach gym. She, leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries and incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. Okay, I see now. I knew it. <laughs> I knew no normal human being can run like that. He's an honest to God gym teacher. Uh, why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you were drunk. You really went with it too. Really maximized the damage. Was her name Dora? Yeah, Dora Ingelund, I think. Not Dora de Bois. Wait, Dora Ingerland. So we weren't even married? No one is married anymore. This is Revachol. When was this? God, I don't know. Six years ago? She was way before my time. Six years and you haven't gotten over it? What the Jeez. hell is wrong with you? Six years? Oh, okay. Six years is not that much. It couldn't have been six. Three. Let's go with three. Six years? Yeah. Or seven. You're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one normal year. That and Dora Ingelund really tore you a new one. A big one. Who was she? Incredibly bangable. No, I mean, what did she do? She was incredibly fuckable. A beautiful bourgeois woman. Wayfish. Like a welkin, basically. I didn't ask. <laughs> Snow Welkin. Blonde Welkin. Heartbreak Welkin. <laughs> Pain Welkin. I've only seen a picture. 
But it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Look, the sun is about to go down. It's time to go. Be quiet. She turns to face the sea. <laughs> I think she taught in the Academy des Arts, east of the river. Way east. Hard to say which came first, the middle class chick or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist. Several degrees on her. <sighs> is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist? <laughs> Go talk to that. In other words, he's heard enough about this. Okay, am I a dirty cop working for La Puta Madre? No. No? Because the sus suspect seemed to think... You're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, <laughs> Harry. No mob boss would take you. Yes! <laughs> I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. Yay! He would immediately backpedal out of it. I told you it's not that bad. Precinct 41, what kind of station is it? Us? We're the bloody murder station, haven't you heard? With the bad guys, no one likes us. That's not true. Jamrock is too big for one precinct. You are just understaffed. And everyone respects the 41st. You have Captain Price. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're being kind. It is an understaffed station and the district is too big. Which is why we need to... He tells his head northward. Get back to it. We left Torson and McLean to run the Sea Wing. It's not good. Um... Torson and McLean? Mac the Torso Torson and Chester <laughs> McLean. They're not fit to run a wing. Believe me. Things are shaky as it is. They are damn iconic, though. Torson and McLean. An iconic duo, I take it? Yeah. Not like us. Two clinically depressed old men. <laughs> Where's the contrast here? We are garbage. And the sea wing is... God. There are four wings, Harry. A, B, C, and D. We're in C. It's made of losers and clock punchers. You and I reconceptualized it as a task force. It was a mistake. Outside help involved, not only me. Other losers too. He smiles. He's anything but a loser. Although he would like to be seen as one. It's cooler that way. And Price is... Ptolemy Price? He's the son of the old Price. One of the founders of the RCM. Wow. He's one of the most highly regarded men in the force. You're lucky. Somewhere <laughs> under the curved roof of a former silk factory shaped like a ladybird with two chimneys, police captain Ptolemy Price sits behind a heavy wooden desk. Resident medic Nix Gottlieb pours him coffee. It's silent in the captain's office. They speak of change, the city, the tension on the streets. They speak of the events of April and the blood on the streets in May. Did we recently show up at church by any chance? So he remembers that. Yes, there may have been a raid on some churches. It wasn't good press. I was hoping that wasn't us. Shooting up churches never is. I was out of town, to be clear. What happened? Why did we need to go there? Our enemies were hiding in a church, to the best of our information. That's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. Your security clearance is shit tier right now. You have to wait for it to go up. <sighs> he means it. The RCM and its enemies will not be discussed on this coast. All right. Your clearance will not go up while you're within earshot of the Union headquarters. So I work in the bloody murder station? Okay. It's not the bloody murder station. It's an old converted silk mill with green desk lamps and a coffee corner. A lot of good people work there. Hard. Every day. Jamrock is the largest ghetto in River Shoal. Faubourg, technically, but uh, it's divided into 11 districts. Jamrock only as us. Wow, that's a lot. The press will blow over. Jamrock is lucky to have you, and it's often considered to be the greatest of the districts. You're lucky to have it. He says in a reassuring tone. Thank you again, Lieutenant. The Phasmid. I need to tell Lena about this ASAP. Who is Lena? She lives at 1113. Tabernacle Road in Jamrock, remember? Cryptozoologist, she lives in Jamrock on Tabernacle Road. She told told me about this phasmid. Tabernacle? It's on the way over. Near where you live on Perdition. She looks at Vic Nomer. 
Fine. If we're gonna drop you off anyway. She and her husband were conducting the search for the Fasimid. It's their discovery, in part. Yes. They should know as soon as possible. It would do you good to deliver some positive news for a change. Mm -hmm. She is going to be over the moon. Lieutenant Kitsuragi, what will you do now? Well, first I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report <laughs> anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all these. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. About what? Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. He pulls up his collar and looks around, the cold spring light reflected in the lens of his glasses. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready, infiltrate, investigate. Want to do that at Station 41? Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. No, I meant investigate. Come work in Precinct 41. Work with Price? <laughs> I'm flattered, but I don't know if I... A small, crooked smile quivers on his lips. Would fit him. And crazy enough. <laughs> can take the stress. He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. Please. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one. But he's at a loss. Please. Flattered? Your lieutenant Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. <laughs> I would have to tie things up in GRIH first. <laughs> But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbor. Lieutenant turns very serious all of a sudden. And we also have a huge caseload, Lieutenant. Piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. She says with a smile. I do like the sound of that. Recruit detective. <laughs> yeah! Oh my god, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Oh my god. He returns her smile. He's really considering it. Yes! <laughs> oh my god. Yay! I'm ready. Good. She looks at you, then Vic Nemer. Fuck it. Let's go. Tron brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. The man points down the street. The great district hums in the slowly falling snow. A chessboard of wooden houses. 80,000 living souls and chimney stacks. Fire traps as far as the eye can see. From Main Street to Precinct 41, to Boogie Street, forking into the white horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de saint Jerome, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber in Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Dawson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Vikmere? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scottleep looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Potomni Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in the office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the RCM. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minot, of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? Okay. Oh, what just happened? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> They're too far away from each other. Wait, is that their car or is that Kim's? Oh. Hi. Hey, dude. Oh. What? That's so sweet. I guess I am still kind of bleeding. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> 
Uh, I have so many feelings. I have so many feelings. Holy shit. Okay, I don't even know where to begin with this game, man. I have so much to talk about. I just, I think I should start all the way from the beginning. Basically, um, I would like to start out with a huge shout out and thank you to the developers of this game. Um, Zom Studio, ZA slash UM, I don't know how to pronounce it. But you guys are incredible for even reaching out in the first place and offering to send me this game. Um, the early access code and everything it started off very small and you know they sent me the trailer for it and asked me to look into it if i'd like it and i saw the trailer and i just thought you know that seems like it would actually be really cool and i don't know if it's necessarily something i would have looked into myself if i had seen it i don't know if i would have looked into it and i just feel so grateful that through them i was able to discover this game and it has quickly become one of my favorite games like I'm not even exaggerating, it's up there with like the top five at this point. Like, it was so good. It was so good. I really have so many positives about this game that I would like to talk about. Now that all the voice actors are scrolling through, um, I'd just like to shout them out because they did an amazing job and I honestly feel bad for the people who played this game and experienced it for the first time without voice acting because I feel like the voice acting just elevated it so much. All the voice acting was really, really good. I feel like some of them were a little bit silly. Um, specifically, the scab leader, before his voice actor was changed, it was the really bad Scottish accent. And also Titus, kind <laughs> of his voice actor was a little bit. Um, but I mean, overall, I felt like the voices really suited the characters. I thought specifically the voice actor who played Kim was just honestly outstanding. He did such a great job. He really made you feel for his character and kind of, I mean, it's, it's kind of a stereotypical character where you have a, a straight-faced guy with a guy who's sort of like, you know, says random things and then straight-faced guy reacts to him like the straight man. I, I know it's like an archetype, but he changed that and and of course it's in part to the writing as well but his voice actor just really he did such a good job as for the characters i'm gonna move on to um the characters were just so good it was really like every character that was in the world felt so memorable and so human and you know in even your own character harry like it, I'm sure it depends on how you play him, but for me, I really felt for him. I really felt like he was just a guy down on his luck, and he had had a really rough life, um, specifically with his ex and everything, and he was trying to piece himself back together. So it was it was nice watching him become a cop again. I mean, I've already discussed it before, but Kim was my favorite character in the game. He was just, you know, he, he had such a good personality. I honestly, like, I don't know if I can articulate my thoughts very well right now, but it was just really cool to bond with him over the course of this whole investigation and getting to know him as a person. The relationship and how it went from colleagues um, just kind of thrown together in circumstances to friends. I think, honestly, they became friends. It was just very, very cool. Anyways, as I was saying, um, I'm just gonna let this be the backdrop for now. All the characters, you know, even putting him aside for right now, all the characters just felt so lifelike, like I keep saying, and they all had such a funny personality. Like, even the, the people who are kind of just one-off characters, like you don't really... Um, talk to them again. Like someone like, um, what's the guy that, that told us that we were Tequila Sunset? Like someone who's just like a one-off guy like that. Even he had a personality. Even he had like, you could tell he had a backstory. He had a life before this that led him to this point. You know, it just seemed so, everything in this game seemed very deliberate. I'm sure I'll be bouncing back and forth between these points because I didn't like plan any of this out. I'm just, you know, saying all of this outright. But it, this game 
had some phenomenal writing. I, I can honestly say I haven't played a game that was this well written in a very long time. As far as the dialogue options, you know, the story and how it pieced itself together. The dialogue is so funny in this game. I It made me laugh the hardest I've laughed in a long time. It, it just... Everything was so enjoyable. You know that like whatever dialogue option you chose, it would really have some sort of funny outcome or some sort of um, interaction between you and Kim that would just make it funnier. And the characters played off of each other so well. Like really tiny things that you don't think really mattered that much in the game actually impacted it a lot. Like a good example would be the woman that we met outside of the bookstore and how we're like, I'll help you find your missing husband, and it was all a joke, but then come to find out her husband was missing, and he was dead. And that whole storyline just played through so well, because, you know, first you start with this expectation, like, oh, it's just a random lady, this is just for comedic effect, but no, it really did matter. I could go on and on about the writing and how good it is, but um, I think I will get, like, some things that I didn't like out of the way as well. One thing that um, kind of bothered me a little bit about this game was the um, the controls. Obviously I'm playing on the PlayStation and this is the recent version that just came out on the PlayStation. I believe it was originally on the PC which I'm sure would have played a lot better. The PC version I think probably loaded a little faster as well because one of the major major drawbacks about playing on the PlayStation is the loading screens. The loading screens are really really bad. A lot of my footage was taken up like the memory of my camera was taken up with like during an episode a good like 20% of it is loading screens and that's pretty bad. I understand that this is a big game and I don't know I, I don't know what you would do to make that loading time a little bit shorter. It's probably um, some sort of restraint on console version, I'm not sure, but that would definitely be one of my critiques. That and some of the controls are a little bit wonky as far as like moving around in the world. Sometimes you click on things you don't mean to um, and then accidentally leave a room and then you'd be stuck in a long loading screen. That would happen to me a lot. Again, I think a lot of this is better on the PC. I just think some things didn't transfer over to console extremely well. I still think it it does work, it's just that it could, I guess, use a little bit of fine-tuning, I think. Some of the audio, too, was definitely janked up a little bit, uh, especially during the first few episodes of my playthrough when they didn't patch all of the voice acting that well and a lot of the lines didn't actually play. That was a few of the things that were a little bit annoying as far as the dialogue and it not playing, but eventually, like I said, it got patched and that was fixed. And after that, it was fine. It really only happened once with um, Vic Nemer, I think that's his name, um, in the Whirling in Rags. That's really the only time it happened again. And also, another thing I wasn't a huge, huge fan of was the skill checks. The checks, I think, is a very, very cool system and it definitely worked in this game. It's just that Man, sometimes they felt so unfair. I had really bad luck this series. But, you know, when it mattered, it mattered. And I did, I think I did pass a lot of the important ones. But as far as like failing the 97% checks, I feel like there just should be such a rare chance that you would fail that. And I don't know, maybe I'm just extremely unlucky. Like you, you could kind of tell like, okay, I've lost a few of these checks in a row. The next one, even though it's low, I'll probably pass it because I've been failing a lot of them. I don't know, maybe that's not how it works, I don't know. But I do think it's actually a really cool system. Another thing I'd like to talk about, back to the things that I really like, was your skills. How all of your skills had their own personality is just so cool. The voice actor who played like the narrator through the whole thing, so good. It was so good. Like a lot of the different skills like in contrast with physical instrument and empathy, even though they had the same voice actor, they felt like completely different characters just by the way he was delivering the lines. I think that is so impressive. I'm just amazed at how well they were able to write all these characters to the point where basic concepts such as like volition was his own character. He felt like his own person um, and he was influencing other decisions and like how the skills bickered with each other and argued back and forth. And 
I just love, I love that. I could go on and talk about this game forever, honestly. It really did blow me away. Another thing I'd like to say about the ending specifically is that I feel like I, I don't know if I was a huge fan of the, um, you know, the reveal of who the shooter actually was. I feel like it makes sense. It does make sense, but it just wasn't as satisfying as I thought it would be to figure out who actually killed him because you know, we had been chasing all these leads for the whole game and nothing really pointed to to a specific guy. I feel like I'm not making sense, but I, I feel like it would have been more satisfying to have it be someone that we already knew about instead of just this guy on an island. Um, but I don't know. I'd like to know what you guys think about um, the deserter and his character and, and all that. I think that the ending definitely felt the most rushed out of the whole game, but... I also think that they set up a perfect way to like slide into a sequel, perhaps? I am really crossing my fingers for a sequel to this game. They really set up this world as being so expansive. I imagine that would take a long time and I also hope that if they do, it is also voice acted. I don't think I would have played this game on my channel had it not been for the voice acting because I don't think I could read all of those lines and all those characters and do all the different voices. I'm just not really good at that type of thing. I am very bad at reading um, out loud as you could probably tell from the whole series and also pronouncing all the French names. Not my forte. If they do come out with a sequel, which again, I'm really hoping they do, um, I'd love to see where they go with this whole union um, issue. The political side of this game, which admittedly is a huge part of this game, I definitely wasn't as into just because I'm not really that type of person. I tend to be sort of in the middle. Like I was trying to be with Harry where I was just picking uh, none of the above to any of the options because I just didn't really want to get into it. I felt like a lot of um, the lore heavy sides of this game um, dragged a little bit. It was just a lot of dialogue to read and listen to actually and it just, um, it just went on for a long time. And sometimes when you saw paragraph after paragraph after paragraph, it's kind of like, okay, let's move on a little bit and um, and make a little progress. I think it might be better for if you're just playing it on your own time instead of a series, because I felt like for me, I was making the game drag by asking every single question. Even though I wanted to be thorough, I didn't want it to drag, and it was kind of hard to find a balance between the two. I didn't save scum. A lot of people told me, if you're going to play this game, don't save scum it. Um, because that's a big no-no. So I stick with the, you know, the results that I got. If I failed a check, I failed it. The only time I had to do that was during the tribunal where my game literally crashed and I had to replay it over and over until I got as close as I possibly could to my first, you know, outcome. Um, I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this series. I know it's been a long run and I probably didn't get um, everything done that you guys wanted to see, but I'll definitely be replaying this again on my off time and just seeing what the outcomes are going to be like. I wonder how the game would have ended up if you weren't friends with Kim, which honestly would break my heart because we got him to join us in Precinct 41 and now he's going to be working with us and hopefully he's going to be our new partner. I don't really care for the John Mc McNair, whatever his name was. <laughs> Anyways, I've been talking for long enough. I could go on and on about this game. I think I've talked about the major points I want to discuss, um, but overall, I loved this game. I loved it so much. I really was obsessed with playing and recording, and I just thought about it like every single day. If you guys haven't played it for yourself, I highly, highly recommend it's on the PlayStation Store for $39.99, I think, uh, USD. So if you're interested, please go for it because it's just so good. Um, and I feel like people would choose different um, choices than I chose. So, you know, see what would have happened if you chose what you wanted to, because I guarantee it would be a different outcome and it would probably be hilarious. Again, special thank you to ZA slash UM. So I'm Studios for sending me this game. You guys are incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really, really enjoyed this game. 
and being sucked into the world of Revachol and Martinez and meeting all the people was just very special. And I'm so happy that I experienced it with you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like or subscribe if you're new because I'd love to have you stick around and watch them play some video games and hang out with me. I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.